in today's show, why high power mode is coming to max and how Apple isn't holding anything back from you. I'm Mike Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and only you. And in this show, we are talking first of all about high power mode coming to the Macs. This is something that has been found in the latest beta version of Mac OS Monterey. But there was a similar thing, pro mode, found in uh, a beta version of Catalina 2. It looks like this is going to be an equivalent to kind of power profiles that you get in Windows. Sorry for mentioning... Uh, a rude word in this show but yes it is similar to what you would find if you go into your kind of power profiles thing where you've got different modes for when you're on uh, connected to power when you're connected to uh, when you're running off battery and uh, kind of that balanced mode that most kind of Windows computers seem to live in most of the time so this is an interesting development because one of the big things that Apple has kind of always done is especially since Apple Silicon particularly, there has been no difference in performance whether you're running on battery power or whether you are running from the mains. That's something that the Windows laptops definitely have not been able to do, and that's partially down to the efficiency of Intel chips, and again, sorry for my bad language. But I think it's interesting because it could be that these M1X Macs, which presumably this is what is kind of being focused on with this kind of mode that's being introduced, if that is the case, this is just in the betas, it might be something that is just a testing mode or something along those lines. But if it is, it could be that these uh, M1X MacBook Pros have the option to basically run at kind of M1 speeds and have absolutely insane battery life. It could be that we could be pushing towards, I don't know, 30 hours of battery life at M1 speeds, which is no slouch. But you also have the option of enabling those extra cores and uh, when you're on battery mode, going all out and having the, the full 10 core power available. I would guess that this is something that Apple will kind of manage behind the scenes in most of the time. However, it, it's interesting that they look like they might be giving us the option in settings maybe even in control panel to just go all out and uh, kind of allow the battery to drain a little bit quicker in order to get the absolute best performance now that could be interesting for gaming that could be interesting for if you're doing for example live streaming and you want to make sure that you've got absolutely the best possible performance even though you can't be connected to the mains for some reason i just think this is a really interesting development and i think it's probably going to be more along the lines of giving you insanely good battery life most of the time when you don't necessarily need that balls to the wall performance, uh, but also having the option to really push the boat out when you need it. Now, let me know what you think about this. It's a very kind of sketchy rumor. It's not, well, it's not a rumor, it is there in Monterey, but we just don't know quite why yet, and I'm very excited to see what happens when we actually get to the next Mac event, uh, hopefully on October the 12th, that's still got my money on it, got my money on it, however, I've been so wrong in the past, I thought we were getting M1X in April, so don't listen to me. Next up, we have got the October 28th investor call scheduled, we will do a live stream as usual, but that is going to be beyond, we hope, the next Apple event probably about two weeks after, if we're right, about the 12th of October, which makes a lot of sense because then Apple would have their first orders in for these M1X Macs and would be able to talk about how enormous the demand is and that's always a good thing. Now, I think it's going to be another record breaker. This is not financial advice. Don't buy shares and stocks based on me because I'm the guy that's normally wrong about when Macs are coming out. Regardless of that, I think it's important to kind of know how Apple's getting on with these things, uh, and it is always interesting. We will be doing a live stream afterwards. It's not always the most exciting thing from that point of view, but sometimes there is something really interesting that comes out. So we'll do the live stream. We'll talk about the, uh, the investor call itself, and then we'll answer your questions in general, and I'll see if Saran can come on as well, because I think that would be really cool. Saran, if you're watching this, um, let me know uh, if you want to join me for that one. If you're not watching it, why? 
And next up, the iPad Air OLED project is cancelled for now. Now, I didn't think this was real in the first place, so seeing the news that it was a project that was being cancelled made me feel pretty vindicated. Super story that was never a thing. But then actually the amount of detail as to why it's been cancelled made me realise that this actually was something that genuinely Apple was probably looking at. So it seems the cancellation comes down to a single versus double stack OLED panel from Samsung. Don't ask me what single versus double stack actually means. But the current tech that Samsung has is single stack, but Apple is not happy with the longevity of that technology in that it might well fail too quickly for the length of time that iPads tend to be in service. The double stack technology that Apple wants would give up to four times the service life with double the brightness, but Samsung is only willing to develop that production for this if long-term production is guaranteed for the panels, which would obviously limit Apple's opportunities to innovate and change their products. This comes back again to one of the biggest why don't they just issues that Apple faces all the time. When we heard last year that 120 hertz promotion for the iPhone screens was being delayed, it wasn't because Apple was holding back the feature to drip feed features out so that over years, iPhones are still compelling. It's not that Apple didn't care enough to include it or that they were cutting costs, it's that the scale that Apple makes their products at is basically unheard of in the industry. It's that there wasn't anyone that was actually capable of building displays at the spec and volume that Apple would require for the millions of iPhones they make. Now, Apple wants the iPhone to be the best it possibly can be every single time, and the same with all of their other products. And I don't think they're ever sitting in Cupertino thinking, no, we have to save this to make next year's iPhone worth buying. It's the same as when people say that Apple won't push the performance of their chips unless the others catch up. That is bullshit. Apple are making their chips as fast as they possibly can every single generation, as long as that doesn't mean that the efficiency or reliability takes a hit. It makes far more sense to push out the chips as powerful as possible as quickly as Apple can, because if they have a widening performance gap between themselves and the rest of the market, that will only grow their market share. Most people don't upgrade all of their devices on an annual basis, and it's about gaining market share when you can, and making sure that the products that are available when people are ready to upgrade are as good as possible, so that they choose your brand instead of the other stuff. And I really don't get it when people say, oh no, they just want to keep just ahead of the competition so people keep buying their stuff. No, if they can develop something that is like 30% faster than anything else on the market, and does it with decent battery life, they will put it out tomorrow, and even if they can only go 10% better than that the following year, like, the gains year on year are not the issue. Like, it's the gap between them and everyone else that makes the big difference. People are not looking at, well, how much faster is it than last year, because they probably don't have last year's item. They have what they have now, which could be a Windows PC, it could be a Mac, it could be whatever. They want a decent improvement over what they currently own, not over what Apple released last year. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense to you guys. I, I really don't understand it when people are saying, no, no, they're keeping this back. Yes, Apple are working on products that won't come out for three to five years, probably, behind the scenes. They're working on the designs. They're working on what it's going to look like. But they're not holding those designs back. They're not ready yet. They're, they're getting stuff ready for when the technology catches up. This year's iPhone's chips are about 10% faster on single core performance and around 20% faster between 18 and 21, depending on what you look at uh, in terms of multi-core performance, but they're 55% faster on graphics. And graphics has always been the place that Apple has lagged behind a bit. So that's a really good thing. So I think that bodes really well as well for the laptops that are coming. And I really think that gaming is going to be something that Apple actually gives a crap about finally because we've got Apple Arcade uh, on iPhone, on iPad, on Apple TV and on Mac and I think that they actually do care about gaming and I think they're looking at how people are using Apple Arcade to see where they should focus their efforts and if the graphics have just improved massively I think they are realising that people care about games. But what do you think? Are Apple holding stuff back from us or am I right and they're always trying to put out the best possible product at the time that they've got the technology and the capacity to make it. Answers down below. And before we get to iCave Answers, where I answer your questions that you leave in the comments with hashtag iCave Answers, we overtook Jai at Tech Hyped. 
We overtook his channel back when we had about 3,000 subs, and I think he was on about 7,500. Uh, I challenged him to a race to 10,000, and if you haven't checked out his channel yet, he basically covers every single uh, beta release for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and probably now macOS as well, because he's finally joined the Mac family, and got rid of his crappy old Dell book, so go and give him a sub if you haven't already, because let's make it interesting. And into iCave Answers, Josh asks iCave Answers, why doesn't Apple have USB-C on the iPhone still? I could tell you exactly why they don't, Josh. The big reason is that the vast, 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 vast majority of people don't want it. I know this sounds ridiculous, and I know that probably everyone, I would say probably 80% of the people that watch my channel do want it. I don't care. Um, I think it would be handy. I don't think it's a deal breaker for anyone. I don't think there's anyone that's not bought it because it hasn't got a USB-C port on it. There might be a handful that might have come over from Android. They don't want to they don't want to waste all of their old chargers. The big reason is that the vast, 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 vast majority of people that use an iPhone, as we said before, I think there's about a hundred ish million iPhones a year sold. There's about eight, ten million Macs, something like that. People are saying that they want their Macs and their iPhones to use the same charger. Okay, you're one in ten. Let's let's put it at 1 in 10, 90% of people that have an iPhone probably don't have anything else that uses USB-C in their lives. So if you change it, then all of a sudden they need to get new chargers, they need to get new accessories if they happen to have something that uses the lightning port. But for the vast majority of people, it would make no real difference other than being slightly inconvenient that they only have one wire now that they can charge their iPhone on, whereas they have four years worth of charger cables that currently work. That's the biggest issue. It's not really, I don't think, about Apple making money off of made for iPhone accessories. I don't think they make really that much money off of it, that it would make that much difference for the amount of grumbling that happens on YouTube. I, I, I would guess what, may, maybe a couple of billion a year. Now that would be fairly life-changing money to me as a YouTuber. To Apple and TC sitting there in Cupertino, that's really a drop in the ocean, which is just mind-boggling. Lars Anderson asks, I gave answers. I think the Mac Pro 2013 Silver is the most beautiful computer ever. However, it's very dated computer which is slow and uses a lot of electricity. I have one of those. Do you think it would be possible to mod the logic board from a maxed out M2 Mac Mini and then 3D print a backplate for the port to fit the holes of the Mac Pro and stabilize the internals? Then I could sell the original hardware on eBay and level the cost that way. I would say that nothing is impossible. I would say that that's going to be an enormous amount of work for what could be achieved by putting a Mac Mini under your desk and leaving your um, 2013 Mac Pro on the desk um, and, and basically just pretending that you're using that. Um, it, it's a really interesting project and it's really cool and I love when people hack stuff into other stuff. Like there was a guy who put the M1 Mac Mini internals into an iMac G5 or an iMac early Intel model. Regardless, it was one of the white bezeled plastic polycarbonate ones and it looks awesome because it's now a super old iMac that runs as a Mac Mini and that's just cool. Um, is it a particularly practical thing to have done? Not really. Uh, is it awesome? Yes. Would it be awesome to put the stuff inside the chassis of a, a 2013 Mac Pro? Yes, it'd be awesome. I, I, I just don't know how much more practical it is than just kind of leaving it on your desk as a, a showpiece, which is what I did with my G4 Cube. I mean, I could easily put a Mac Mini inside that, but I don't know why it's better. Brian Data asks, have you seen any EEC registrations for the new M1X Mac Mini? As far as I can tell, we've only got the EEC registrations for the M1X MacBook Pro laptops. Um, no, I haven't seen anything for it. I will have a, a dig through the database later on when I get time. But uh, yeah, at the moment, it does look like we've just got the M1X MacBook Pros registered. But there is definitely time because they could put it out. Uh, they they could register it like a week before the event or even during the event because it's probably not going to ship for a couple of weeks after that anyway. So I'm still kind of thinking we'll probably see it. And also Brian asks, uh, IK answers, how is COVID treating you and your family? Hope nothing too dire. I feel a lot better today. The kids basically came up clear yesterday when we did lateral flows. We sent off the lab tests, which is the official one. Um, so we haven't heard back from that. I'm feeling, as I say, a lot better. Uh, my wife's now in bed, not feeling very good, but she's still coming up clear. So 
that's kind of a win. Um, but yeah, thank you again for all of your lovely messages, guys. Everyone has been super kind, and thank you all very much. Uh, if you've got a question you want to ask in a future show, like tomorrow, for example, hashtag I gave answers down in the comment section, and I would love to answer it. Please keep it short and sweet, because it makes it much easier for me to keep these rolling. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.